All right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do a quick review of uh, what, what's new in Charm 611 uh, and then kick off a bit of a discussion uh, regarding um, what people would like to see in future versions of Charm. Um, so as a note, uh, and a bit of a preview, we are uh, transitioning our online discussion default form to be in the GitHub discussions instead of uh, the old mailing list. So I'm going to put a link for that in the Google Doc. Uh, all right. So this is a feature release, and uh, the focus has been uh, on overhauling the load balancing infrastructure. Uh, the goals here are essentially to make it much, much easier for people to develop new load balancers on, on the existing infrastructure and make it so that you don't have to go through a whole lot of steps that used to be required uh, and that you, you now should not need to like make any alterations to the charm source tree itself uh, to have a custom load balancer for your application. And so um, this included a number of changes to the architecture where we've been replacing the old central LB and uh, hybrid base LB designs. And uh, these have been essentially incorporated, at least necessary features have been incorporated into uh, tree LB. And so a much more um, in-depth discussion uh, is available in the docs uh, and uh, in front of some of the earlier talks that we had in the workshop. One of the other uh, focal points for the 6.11 release has been improving uh, GPU performance with a special focus on minimizing uh, redundant copies. And that has been by utilizing uh, GPU direct and zero copy approaches so that when we need to transition uh, data intranode for GPUs, it can be sent directly without any kind of a, a copy having to go through host memory. Uh, so this allows for much better performance on uh, machines with multiple GPUs. And there are uh, there's limited work uh, going to improve the sort of GPU um, to GPU across nodes as well. But that's uh, future. Uh, as opposed to being immediately available in 6.11. Beyond that, um, in the build system, we have switched the default process uh, from the, the sort of classic uh, build system uh, to using CMake. And uh, the, the old build system is still available with build old. So if you run into issues uh, where some scheme you used to use doesn't work, uh, build old remains available, but um, in general, uh, on newer systems or under most conditions, the CMake system uh, should do the right thing uh, and will interoperate uh, better with the, a more modern ecology uh, in the application space where uh, they are uh, largely moving towards uh, CMake infrastructure. Um, as noted at the top, uh, we have adopted GitHub discussions. Um, and uh, so that's, that's available um, in a tab on GitHub, just right there under discussions. And um, the top level one is, is the one I just posted uh, where we are gonna collect uh, various ideas uh, and requests people have for future versions. But um, we expect the, and hope to have more dynamic, interactive, engaging discussions in the GitHub discussions environment. Uh, as it will allow us to cross-link with the rest of the GitHub infrastructure um, more smoothly than uh, prior venues. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the Bit Bit <coughs> Big Sim emulator has, has been deprecated. Uh, it's no longer uh, available in, in 6.11, but people who need it uh, can still access it in, in the older versions. Um, onward to uh, other features and fixes, uh, there's been a recent focus on improving uh, support in TRAM. Uh, specifically, variable size messages are now supported. And uh, Jamin has been uh, working on improving performance in a variety of other schemes, um, especially with 
using uh, node level constructs to minimize uh, redundant issues. And uh, we've added a pup buffer API. Uh, so that uses zero copy to do in place pupping to avoid having essentially both memory bubbles and copy overhead uh, when pup is used um, under any conditions. And array broadcasts are, have now been made node aware so that uh, the redundant copies that were previously required uh, are no longer necessary and uh, they can further leverage uh, the zero copy infrastructure. Um, similarly, expedited no keep array broadcasts are also uh, supported and uh, should be relatively optimal. We've added CMI node reduce uh, to, for converse node level reductions. Um, this helps with some of our infrastructure uh, and uh, for any direct users of converse. And we have uh, modified the infrastructure so that the CNP optimized one um, only does a seg fault instead uh, to avoid some of the other crash behaviors so that um, people can actually get the sort of debugging information that they need um, and not a crazy amount of useless information. And uh, we have modified um, live is so that it uses callbacks and, and is and, and now interoperates uh, safely with ASLR. We have updated uh, the implementation of various talks, atomics, locks, and fences uh, to use C11 and C11 versions um, where the compiler has those so that they should be uh, both portable and more efficient. Uh, we fixed a number of bugs in Happy and uh, updated the implementation to use new CUDA APIs. We added a new attribute to uh, entry methods um, for speculative execution. Uh, this gets can be called for you when a PE becomes idle. And so it, this is one of those handy things uh, for various uses, uh, either functionally or uh, to look for misbehaviors, uh, depending on your use case. Um, we've improved performance support and fixes for the UCX layer. Um, and IBM Power is also not supported with UCX. Uh, so on, on machines where UCX is available, uh, it should perform uh, well. And in, in most cases, it, it is the best choice when it is available. CMI 6 send family uh, now uh, has been tuned up to avoid making uh, excess copies for no key messages. We fixed a bug with element IDs um, and fixed a bug in block map array creation. So it, it, uh, doesn't misbehave terribly in uh, some use cases. Uh, the aforementioned win idle uh, is matched by lower level constructs uh, for CCD processor long idle. Uh, we've added is checkpoint and is migration methods um, so that uh, you can have that condition logic inside your pups uh, to correctly change your conditional behavior when that is the case. We've added execution metadata to predictions logs, um, added a number of uh, new benchmarks and tests, and uh, bounded the number of hopped messages can take uh, for chars that migrate frequently. Uh, Adaptive API has uh, seen a suite of changes. Um, ISOMLX sync uh, is now on by default. Um, and so this allows the ISOMLX to work uh, safely and correctly and efficiently uh, on potentially all architectures. Uh, but if there is some reason to not use it, you, you can disable it. Um, the AMPI only build target has been added. Um, and this doesn't remove any features of AMPI. It simply turns off features uh, of char++ that AMPI does not use. Uh, so it basically removes a bunch of redundant code paths and some uh, actual overhead, uh, which is handy for tuning up uh, AMPI applications. The uh, TLS globals feature uh, has, a, has its fixed basically in terms of how it handles things on macOS. Uh, we fixed a number of bugs in activation and migration callbacks, fixed a bug in MPI wait some, and uh, now support uh, a number of AMPI build flags and environment variables uh, to personalize or customize the behavior for AMPI CC. Uh, and we've improved the portability of both FS globals and PIP globals. So that was the, the high level uh, 
our verbal burst of what we have done for 611. Um, for the rest of the discussion, um, I, I welcome any, any questions people may have um, regarding those features uh, and uh, sort of open the floor uh, for uh, wish lists for the next dot release. Um, uh, presumably 613 would be the one with uh, our features and 612 would have bug fixes. But, uh, and also for beyond, uh, just general features in the, in the larger scale, uh, the kinds of changes people might think of for uh, Charm Next Generation or Charm 7. I've seeded it with a couple of ideas that we've tossed out, uh, replacing Converse with Argobots, having uh, PEs hosted directly on the accelerator, um, various ways to avoid having CI files and decals and defs, alternate binding choices for chars instead of being uh, essentially core bound or PE bound, uh, they, they might have uh, larger scale bindings. Um, and uh, there's an opening question right now, if we look at the actual implementation source for char arrays, uh, it has explicit support for array dimensions up to six. But if you needed higher dimensionality than six in your char array, you'd have to go to custom indexing uh, at the moment. Um, is there a foreseeable need to go higher? I guess my feature request would be further expansion on the um, load balancing documentation. And uh, if, if I search for pop underscore buffer currently on read the docs, should I be finding it? Search for what again? Pop underscore buffer, the pop buffer thing. Uh, or is that being, is that in a future documentation thing? I, I don't know how read the docs works in detail. But... No, I think read the docs search. I, while we were talking earlier, I searched too. And I think there is something wrong with the way that I, I don't know. I, I couldn't find a few things that I expected to find there. Uh, so the okay. fact that many documents are put together there might be part of the problem. Um, but whatever should be documented. I it should be, that might be an oversight. It's a newer feature. Yeah, I think that's yet to be added. Yeah, and the load balancing, uh, we need to document it, but we also need to get our suite uh, together. So that's very much on our agenda. Uh, I, I would say we will do that. That's understood. Yeah, and, and I guess the question, one question I would have is, I, and we're more than happy to provide, you know, like, this is what we found confusing, or this is what we didn't understand from the documentation. Um, so yeah. the question, the question, right? Because that's sort of ultimately, like, that's the ultimate test, right? Is can yes. people not working on the project use it? Um, what timeline are you looking at for six eleven? Just to make sure, you know, because some of us, one of us is moving, and you know, there's other workshops going on. We just want to make sure that we can get you feedback so that that can go into main 611 early so we can sort of prioritize that on our end. Well, I think we wanted to release 6.11 soon, but I'm not sure the load balancing documentation should hold that up. Uh, right, but no, no, that's not, but I would like to be able to get you the documentation before you do that, right? So the question is, when do you want to release it so that we can get you, you know, feedback hmm. before then? Um, so, I, mean, I think the upper bound is we would like to have 6.11 released uh, before supercomputing 20, so before mid-November. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's all, all I really was asking for was, you know, what, yeah. do you, you know, is it three days from now or is it, you know, three weeks from now? So. Uh, three days, it's, it's more than three days because there's a couple of things we really want in there that aren't quite through review yet. So, um, but it's definitely one month ish let's say L less than a month okay perfect yeah just so that you know we can run the beta on our end and see if there are any issues that we've encountered okay thank you thank you
Um, any other questions or things to discuss? I understand it's the end of a long day. So people's brains may be experiencing fatigue of various sorts. Um, Oh, I wanted to say one other very quick thing. Uh, the uh, At some point, I think last year, this might have been discussed, greedy and all those other greedy related strategies, greedy, greedy calm, which is not really calm anyways and refined, should all be replaced by this uh, one thing called greedy refine that Juan wrote. And it's re reasonably good and it can actually stand in for both. There is no particular advantage greedy brings um, that you need to keep those far. Have they been cleaned out, Ronak? But greedy and greedy uh, refine both exist. The other greedies, I believe, have been removed. Yeah. Okay. There may be yeah, situations where greedy does better, but I think we, yeah. Yeah, I mean, our, our experience so far as Ponswa showed is that the rec by part seems to work the best, but. Yep. It's sort of too early to, you know, I, it's for us to be able to say, yes, this is definitely the best thing. And I think sort of the long run, it would be like an exact space filling curve. But if you're able to yeah. get sort of within 10, 20% of that with something easier. I, th I think, yeah, long run, uh, maybe the effort involved in, uh, uh, in doing a space filling curve based one is not huge, given that we had a prefix sum based strategy distributed. So, um, We'll, I will see what what's doable there, but um, but but yes, that's very much on the agenda. Yeah. Uh, while well, we're, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So while we're talking about load balancers, something that I had wondered uh, in doing these initial experiments we've been doing is. Um, is there any interest or, or thoughts on supporting an extension of the current uh, behavior where I, I can run one balancer the first time and then a different balancer every subsequent time, but where I would instead run the special balancer, for example, once uh, out of a hundred times or once every sort of specifiable event and then the other balancer the majority of the time. And the, the reason I'm thinking about this is if we have an application that does periodic big changes like AMR, where we might want not just a, a naive, or sorry, I shouldn't say naive, but a, a, maybe we want an expensive load balancer to be applied periodically after a big restructure like AMR. But this should have been like supported even like 15 years ago. It's from the command line, you can specify multiple dash balancer or plus balancer, I forgot, but you can specify and then each balancer, each balancing cycle will use the subsequent uh, load balancer on, in the command line. Does yeah, that you. I think he wants one that's tuned to a, an event. No, for example, I, I want to run the first one with greedy and then the sub subsequent load balancer as a refinement. Yeah, but what if what if I want to run so so and, and maybe this is a bad idea, okay? So feel free to tell me so, but what if one out of a one out of twenty times I want to run a recursive bipartition? And the other 19 out of 20 times, I want to run a refine. This was the point of what Gingbin was talking about. NAMD being uh, somewhat easy because it didn't require that much uh, of redoing the whole thing very well again. It might have fallen out of use, but uh, we definitely want that. Uh, what you are saying is definitely should be supported, whether to do it through a command line option or whether to do it through some kind of a configuration file, we will see, but it should be supported. Ronak, um, uh, is supported. Like what, what he said is supported if you do it once. I think what he was asking is, can you do like heavy duty like greedy, then like 19 refines, and then go back to greedy Correct. and be more refines. Right now it's either you loop 
or you yeah. go to the end and then stay at the last subject. Yes. So I, I'm just saying that we should support what he's asking and we will. It's just a question of how how quickly, how it's not hard because it's the same mechanism. If we allow switching, then we allow, can allow well, the pattern. It's just yeah, but how to do it. I think there, there is a, a generalized feature request kind of in, in there whereby the user could ask, can the next low balancer step use strategy X? Yep. yep. Yeah, so, right. Not a good way to interface with the load balancing manager from within the application. It's like once you get past the command line, it's it does what it does. So I think that's something we also talked about in the refactoring of the load balancing framework was a, a bit better way to interact with it during the application's run, which would be allow you to signify certain events like this. Yeah, uh, if I remember correctly, we, there is a function that you can call from the application that lets you set what load balancer to use. It's a little bit of a bake in that I think you just have to give it an index. So just to, you have to know what the numbering basically is. But I think you can do this programmatically internally. The other thing I'll say is that this also might be a good use case for meta balancer. Um, unless you really want to use the static structure of what load balancers you call if you want to do one and then 19 other ones and then go back. Meta balancer does this in a more reactive way. The thing is that the control of when to call it is sort of out of your hands you trust the runtime to make these decisions automatically for you. But if that's what you're going to do anyway, then that can be a good solution potentially. Yeah, although it, it would still have to discover, have to trip over the massive change and then realize that the choice that had been good for prior invocations was no longer ideal, so. Right, I, I, the, the sort of concrete example that happens is as the black holes get closer together, some parts of the grid become very distorted and, and not, you know, the, the Jacobians sort of go bad and everything gets terrible. And at that point, basically what you have to do is scrap the whole grid uh, and completely redraw a lot of the elements um, that, that make up the de decomposition. And so it's sort of at that point, it would be like, okay, we, you know, Whatever distribution you thought you knew, it's basically completely toast. So, so I think the point is that that point it might you might think it is the physics of it that's deciding it, but the computational behavior <laughs> is also telling the runtime system the same thing. So it should be able to figure this out. That's Eric's point. But uh, ideally, oh, hold on. Even if that's the case, uh, we still would need to provide a fallback anyway. So I think we're going to have to do both. Uh, fully automatic is where we. Always, I mean, we need to have a default that observes everything and does the best job it can. And then the people are still going to think they can do better and sometimes they can. And you have to always provide that option. So, yeah. yeah. So this would be pretty easy for us to improve the current call structure, right? You just have to add an enum with the names of the strategies. Yeah. Ronak is saying it's already there. It's just, okay. you have to know the enum mapping. Right, Rana? I, if I believe so, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that that function is exposed to the application where you can just say, call this load balancer next time and you provide the index of the load balancer. Yeah, so we can replace that call to an index with something, it's a tiny amount of syntactic sugar to, get it, to have them give a, a name. And the other, other improvement that we already have on the Anvil, or is it already there? I don't know, is within node, uh, Less frequently, sorry, more frequently you can do within node for things that are kind of using uh, a, a PE a core as an anchor for uh, a char rather than using OpenMP or something. Um, for those, we can migrate within a node more frequently to postpone having to do a cross node load balancing, doing it less often instead. So that's another thing that tree LB has. And I think uh, there is no reason why distributed LB should not have that feature as well. So all this phase structure, writing some kind of regular expression on command line or having programmatic interface. So API whereby you can specify, do this now are all things that we need to consider. I'm not sure how quickly it will be done, but I think it is a not a uh, huge undertaking. 
We just have to systematically do it. And one I guess a simple suggestion is that if I remember from Francois plot, basically they ran it once and then did dummy for a long time. One thing you can do is just not call at sync also. That basically just, you, you can just avoid calling load bounce if you don't want to call something. So it's different if you want to call a different strategy that's not a dummy strategy, but if your solution is just to not call it, you can just never invoke it until you need to invoke it again. Yeah, granted. I, I guess uh, the, the problem we're facing is we're not quite sure what the strategies will be uh, interesting to us in the long term. We just have reason to believe from these initial experiments that we will want to call the recursive bipartition to clean up the distribution of chars onto the system, at least at the beginning, and probably every time there is a substantial change to the, the layout of the chars, for example, from AMR, or as Neil said, if we enter a, a, a different physics phase of the computation because the black holes are merging or something. So, so I'm, I'm sort of thinking ahead and thinking we're, likely to want to do something like the recursive bipartition at some unknown interval and then whatever else works we will probably do in between um, yeah so yeah if, if the right answer is do nothing then granted the, the optimal thing is to just not load balance um, but if if we need to use some other sort of polishing load balancer at those intermediate times then yeah, in a, in a perfect world, meta balancer would figure this out for you, but we are never in a perfect world. So we want to come up with ways to allow you to get the, the performance that, that you can reach. Yeah, and, and I. Or, or at least could, ways for us to waste time in coming to the conclusion that you did a good job. That's also good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have not looked at the meta balancer very much. So I will, I will go do my homework on that now. I guess a quick comment would be, it, I, I think having a, a, a programming API for this would be somewhat nicer than uh, fancy command line regular expressions. My worry is that, you know, if you have a whole bunch of scripts and scripts and scripts, mm -hmm. then you need to be very careful about how you forward arguments to different things. And, and my worry would be that, you know, then we end up with like a 400 character uh, command line argument or, or worse. Yeah, that, that one, one, one thing I mentioned with this too is that with the new tree LB, um, there's command line arguments, but you can also specify a configuration file for your load balancer. So this lets you do it more reproducibly, and you can obviously save the state, not to type it all out on the command line every time. Yeah. So I mean, does that? currently have the way for the user to specify different strategies at different LB iteration counts? Not at different iteration counts. You can specify, for example, if you have a root node and um, PE style thing, you can say that you want to run a certain strategy. You can, you can specify two strategies, let's say for the node level. And then there's a repeat strategies option where it'll either go through that and then repeat the last one or go back to the beginning every time. So those are the options right now. But we can, of course, add some other mapping that says do this 20 times and then do this and then go back. So we can add something similar to what you're yeah. suggesting. I think, I think that's not hard to do, but for the situation that they're describing, it's not likely that they'll always know that it's going to be iteration x. It's, it's a conditional behavior of all. Yeah, that's right. And so, almost, so, sorry, go ahead, Francois. Yeah, I, I was agreeing that uh, if if this can be programmatically specified, that might actually be more useful. Yeah, yeah I think that's definitely a useful thing to add. It would be good if we could write some of this down concretely in a GitHub issue or in a discussion, so we don't lose track of this too. Yeah, it's in the Google Doc now, but not as a uh, not a GitHub issue yet. Uh, I mean, we're happy to, I, we can write up a little blurb of like, this is what we want to do. And this is sort of what it, it dictates the intervals, which in general is some physics thing happens that we don't know ahead of time when it's going to happen. And so we have to sort of be reactive to it, but yeah, we can. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so that was a fruitful discussion. Um,
any other topics. But it would be really nice. So there's currently, you know, there's like the CK out or like the print, the, the CK printing, print F, or I forget what it's called. Um, uh, it would be really cool if we could have this sort of functionality, but uh, right into a, a log file where we specify mm. at the print call where to log it. Um, this is sort of one of the big things that we will ultimately need to do because you know, if we have different code features or different physics features, or you know, we, for example, we want a lot of AMR diagnostics. We don't want that all being blasted into C out uh, or into standard out, or being all blasted into the same text file that something else is being blasted into. You know, ha having some option of specifying maybe even some some writer at the end that you know we you you have something that has some static member function or some object or something like that that then receives the string and writes it to disk in the appropriate manner uh, would be really nice to have. Do you want it centralized or do you care about the ordering? Um, no, uh, I guess, yeah, no. Uh, the, the only thing that, we, exactly what CK out does, just that I can specify a file or a thing that does the write after. So what I'm thinking about, for example, in, in, if we have, you know, a hundred things doing logging, it'd be nice not to have a hundred different files, but say have uh, an HDF5 file that has a hundred different sub sort of groups in it that, that contain the data or something like this. Right, so it might be non-deterministic, but at least it's all in, in one containable place. Right, exactly, exactly. And it's it's basically the big thing is having that sort of guarantee that we don't have, you know, if, like if we did just C out or, or something basic like this, like STID C out, where, you know, we would then get intermingled garbage yeah. uh, to the terminal. So just having that, you, you charm take care of that guarantee and then we can say, okay, we have received this thing, let's, we will write it to the file and, and we know that the file writing is only going to happen serially. But 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 you care about the performance. I mean, if we give a, give you another stream or ability to create any arbitrary stream, just like CK out, with a file at the other end, is that good enough for that? I think so. Uh, uh, yeah. But that would not I, I, mean a database like it has fields and different things going exactly the same place. It is just a grab bag of whatever is come, uh, you are spew, want to spew out to this file. Uh, I would like to be able to specify different files in different parts of the code. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I if I can, spe yeah, so basically if I can write to n files for different parts of the program, yep. but you know what, those just sort of things just get dumped into there in whatever order they show up, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Oh, that's that's easy. I think I, I think I think oh, we simply make a variable for uh, CK like CK out like object as a stream that you can generate. Uh, uh, okay, we'll discuss it internally, but and come up with a solution. But I think I have an idea for what's needed. So, but yeah, I, I would guess you have pretty much all of the infrastructure there with because yeah. you have CK out. So. Yeah. The way CK out does it is all that we want to do. We just reuse it and have, have a file connected to it. Yes, that is exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, right. In, in fact, um, I don't know if uh, Justin discussed this today. The Go, he's, he's trying to implement the Go-like functionality in Charm as example. And in that there are streams. And so maybe that, but anyway, I, I think I'm jumping. I understand the problem. We don't need to spend time discussing the solution here. So good. Okay. All right. I guess um, I sort of relate, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, a, a related thing. I think Charm has some like CKIO thing support, right? Um, uh, if I, at least when I looked at this maybe a year and a half ago, I found that there was a lack of documentation on this and how to use it. Um, so I guess, you know, another feature request would be uh, if there could be some documentation on this or, or at least things that point to example code, because uh, as was mentioned, I think yesterday or something, you know, how to get efficient IO from these things is, is not trivial. And so being able to explore CKIO as, a, as an option um, would be very nice. 
Yeah, that, that's something on my to-do list for uh, the 611 release. So that'll definitely be done before that comes out. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it is already mostly CKO. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, for, for our usage, all we care about is the O part. Um, you know, we, we try to read in as little as possible, really. Uh, any other discussion topics? once going twice all right well uh thank you all uh that will uh wrap up our our discussion segment for the 611 release and uh future uh future requests uh any, any closing uh workshop uh announcements that you